Last time we looked at those Egan matrix functions you need to know to get the most out of your Continue Mini starting off. But there are a lot more functions available to you, as you can see, most all of which apply to the Continue Mini. We looked last time at selecting and setting the 16 user presets. We also looked at how to select the system preset by selecting a category and then selecting a preset from that category. There's also a group option to the right here. This lets you save 1 to 16 of these user presets in a file and then you can recall them back in at any time. To do that you'll just select the group option. You'll see there are a lot of Continuum Egan Matrix Expander options that don't apply to the Continuum Mini. You're really only interested in these first four options. To save your presets, what you'll do is select a preset, and this will save everything from the first preset to that preset. So if I select preset 14, I'll save presets 1 to 14. If I want to save everything, I'll select the last preset, then I will save my group. A window will come up. I'll name that group. G1, for example, save, and then it's going to go through all my presets one at a time, saving them in reverse order until it gets down to the first one, and then they're saved. To test that, I can go into group and clear my user presets, and they'll all clear. Then I can restore, open group, find the group that I saved, and load it back up, and it will restore the presets that I had originally. So if you want, you can save different preset groups. Let's say you're playing on stage and you need a different group for each set you're playing. This is an easy way to support that. We looked a little bit at the cogwheel last time. We have the MIDI and global settings. We talked about the Kenton settings, if I want to set up my Kenton. And there's a pitch table editor that'll come up that'll allow you to create custom tunings for your continuum. There's the default tuning. and Let's say we want some other kind of here pentatonic tuning. It will allow you to create all different kinds of tunings. Then we have the user guides that you can access from the Egan Matrix. The CCE user guide, however, is not supported. That doesn't apply to the Continue Mini. A set of editor shortcuts to help you use the shortcuts in the Matrix. A list of all the barrel styles we'll talk about in a bit. There are about a hundred of these you can choose from to incorporate into the presets you construct. Then the list of all the presets in the release. That's nice to have. Finally, you can go to the Hawken Audio site, and then you have some standard about information and credits for the wonderful instrument that you are playing. Next, we have the MIDI routing area. This will allow you to turn on and off MIDI signals into your DSP, to the CVC, to your output, Perhaps not that useful for the Continue Mini. You probably should just leave these all on. One thing you might want to do, if you want to use your Continue Mini as just an output into a DAW, you just want to record MIDI information, you can turn off the DSP. MIDI will still route through. You can see if I play a little something. And now I'll turn that output to the DSP off, and nothing comes out because the DSP isn't getting any information. Now we come to the fingerboard display area. This is an important part of the matrix that I think you'll use quite a bit. This allows you, if you turn the display on, on the left you'll see a display option. That is shipped normally with the display off. So if you play with display off, you won't see anything appear on the panel. But if I turn that on, and now I play, You get a lot of feedback information on this display. First off, if I just press a note, you'll see my pressure, which is called Z in continuum speak. As I press harder and volume gets louder, the little circle gets bigger. The display also tracks your X, your pitch position. And it shows you how well you are tuned to A equals 440 equal temperament. You'll see a little vertical line or a little line that changes position as you go more out of tune. If you look at your continue mini display, when you're not playing, it will show you the preset. When you are playing, it will show you a tuning grid as well. How do you read this? If you're perfectly in tune, you'll get two bright bars in the middle. 
as I go more flat, one of those bars will get weaker, then disappear, and I will continue to see bars move to the left. If I go to the right, a similar pattern appears. Each one of these little hash changes gives you about an eighth of a semitone. The continue mini is good to better than one cent resolution in the X direction. The regular continuum is ten times better than that. You'll also notice that there are little triangles on the top and the bottom of the display. That'll show you where you are in the Y direction, your front to back. You can see the triangle goes from bottom to top. On the Continue Mini, this Y motion is more a rocking from min to max. Even though it is tracked in increments, the reality is it's very hard for you to play in increments on such a small width of Y. And to optimize your presets when you're creating them, you don't want to have too much of a variation on Y because you really don't have that much room to play with on the fingerboard. You'll also see on the display there are little grids on top. The black line shows you the range of the Continuum Mini. The lines outside of that show you the range of the half-size Continuum. And then, of course, the full display is the large-size Continuum range. You'll see a little T here indicates the touche area that you can program into any preset, and that area will not play normally. It'll be used for tracking a finger, and that touche area can be used to control some other parameter or parameters in your preset. You'll see a little triangle underneath this area. This indicates where middle C is. Now normally this isn't changed too much from preset to preset, but some presets might want the default range to be either a lot higher or lower, and they might readjust middle C for that preset. One example of that is the tin whistle, which you'll see sets that way low because it wants to play. very high in the normal playing range. Next we have a set of things that can be applied globally in some cases and to a preset in others. We already saw the display on and off. The Continuum has a calibrate function. Now the Continuum Mini also does calibration, but it does its calibration on boot up and we saw how fast that is. However, if you have your finger on the Continuum Mini when it's booting up, you'll likely create an error condition Let's give that a shot. We'll turn off our Continue Mini. We'll press the surface and then we'll turn it on. You can see an error is displayed here because we had a finger on the thing when we booted it up. That's the only thing you really have to worry about in terms of calibration on the Continue Mini. Don't touch the surface when you're powering it up. Let's get ourselves back to normal. Okay, our blue dot for connection is back. The CVC, there are a set of default CVC settings that you can use. This will apply if you've connected up your external CVC or micro CVC interface. Next we have note priority and this gets to the heart of understanding your MPE instrument. Note priority actually works in conjunction to the setting that you have on Y and Z whether it's MPE plus, MPE or something set to a specific CC. It also works in relationship to what your polyphony is set to. Let's see how that works. For note priority, there are seven options. Use the oldest MIDI channel for new notes. Use channel with the same pitch. Use lowest channel number. Use only the highest MIDI channel within the polyphony. Use highest two channels, three channels, and four channels. You probably won't be using the bottom four of these much for the Continue Mini. Lipold has some information on using these for recording in the Continuum Manual. You'll probably be using either oldest or lowest channel number for most of your settings on the Continue Mini. I find the lowest channel number is the most useful one. Now how does this work? When you press the fingerboard, the output of MIDI channels per note will depend on what your polyphony is set to, and the starting channel will depend on whether you're MPE, MPE+, plus, or whether you're set to a CC. So if you're in base 4 polyphony, and you keep pressing successive notes on the Continue Mini, in oldest mode, you will cycle through your four channels. 
However, if you're set MPE or MPE+, plus, those channels will cycle from 2 to max polyphony plus 1. In this case, you'll cycle from channels 2 to 5 every time you press the fingerboard for a different note. If you're set to some CC, the Continue MIDI will cycle through your channels from 1 to N. Now, if the MIDI channels are always cycling, it will be impossible for you to remember where you left off when you stop playing and then start playing later on. So if you truly want to keep track of your MIDI channel output, oldest is not going to be very helpful. Let's say you want to record your MIDI output or you want to play the CVC or micro CVC an output voltage on a known channel. In that case I usually set this to the lowest channel number and play monophonically on the Continue Mini. As long as I do that I'm guaranteed that channel 2 will come out if I'm set MPE plus or MPE or channel 1 will come out if I'm set YZ to some CC. So as in the first case, if I continually press the fingerboard on lowest priority, as long as I don't press another note at the same time, I will predictably get the same channel number. Now if I just happen to press another note on the fingerboard while I haven't lifted my finger from the previous one, the Continue Mini will sense two notes and those will come out on channel 2 and channel 3 if I'm set MPE plus or MPE or channel 1 and channel 2 if I'm set to a CC. This could cause you some grief if you're recording to a DAW and you're trying to set notes to, say, a sample library on a certain channel. If you just happen to play polyphonically, you might get a note coming out on a channel you don't expect. Just keep that in mind when you're recording MPE devices to DAWs. If you're set to a bass polyphony of 1, that makes things quite simple. You're playing then monophonically. The Continue Mini won't let you play anything more than one note at a time. And that will wind up being your lowest channel. Either channel 1 if you're set to Y or Z equals some CC. Or if you're set MPE+, plus, you'll be playing on channel 2. Channel with the same pitch if you have a bass polyphony set greater than 1. If the same pitch is being played, you'll stay on that channel, else you'll start cycling through the channels based on pitches played. Remember, if you're set bass 1 plus, that is in effect polyphony 2. So if I play two notes at a time on the continuum, and I don't care what mode I'm in, the continuum will always output on two different channels. We saw with Y and Z, you can either set to MPE or MPE+. Plus. Now I suggest you just keep your Continue Mini set to MPE+, plus for most of the time. This will help you avoid some problems if you want to connect the standard MIDI device to your Continue Mini. MPE+, plus is Hocken Audio's extensions to MPE. For the most part, it increases resolution on band and X and Y, some of which is not going to have too much of an effect on the Continue Mini if you're playing on the fingerboard. But there are other reasons why you want to keep things set to MPE+. Plus. We'll get to in a second. Y and Z can be set to other values here if you have some sample library or something that requires a specific CC for, say, a filter or a Y motion or for expression, for example, CC7, CC11. Uh, unfortunately, you can't set these to any CC you want. You're limited to the CC values that you have here. Now, one thing to be aware of is if you're setting yourself to MPE+, plus, the Continue Mini will set itself into a special Channel 1 mode. I can set up a keyboard and set it to Channel 1. And even though your Continue Mini is still going to output according to the MPE rules, it will interpret input polyphonically on Channel 1. This allows you to connect up a standard MIDI keyboard on Channel 1 and play polyphonically, which is very, very useful. Bend. Bend can be set from 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 24, 36, 48, or the default of 96 for MPE+. Plus. Some MPE instruments, like the Rolly and the instrument, can support a bend of that nature. If you're accepting Channel 1 information from, say, a standard MIDI keyboard and you want to use bend, 
In that case, you're going to use one of these four options, 96 bend 2, 96 bend 5, 7, or 12. These work in conjunction with that special Channel 1 MPE Plus mode. Why a max of 12? Because most standard MIDI instruments don't support a bend of more than 12. Polyphony we already talked about. Bass polyphony 1 without expansion means you will be playing monophonically and only monophonically. The continuum mini will only output one voice. If I set it to allow expansion, that basically doubles your polyphony. So the continuum mini will never really be able to use a preset with polyphony more than either 8 or 4 plus. You'll see a good number of presets on the continuum mini are set to 4 plus. One thing to be aware of about polyphony, if you want to set this to base 1 because you want to play monophonically and record that monophonically on a single channel, for MIDI it's fine, but for continuum mini output, some presets make assumptions of higher polyphony for sound design purposes. So if you're playing a preset and you set it to base 1 and it doesn't sound right, it could be because that preset is making assumptions on higher polyphony for its sound design. That takes care of the basic MPE-related parameters. Pitch can be either in normal or reverse mode. In normal mode, when you play from bottom to top, your frequency will increase as expected. In reverse mode, it'll do the opposite it'll go down as you go up. Perhaps not that useful for the continuum mini. On the continuum it's used sometimes if you want to play from the other side of the instrument it kind of inverts things. Split is not processed on the continuum mini just leave it disabled. MIDI program this is normally off for all presets. If you want to you can set this to a value from 1 to 20 and if you save this with your preset when you load your preset a program change of that value will be sent. Now if you're set to MPE or MPE plus that program change will be sent on channel 1. If you're set to a CC value for Y and Z that program change will be sent on channels 1 to your max polyphony. The remaining item to discuss is note process. This has a number of options. The bottom three really don't apply to the continuum mini. Formula velocity is really programmed through the Egan matrix, so don't worry about that one. The top two could be useful. The normal setting for this is static velocity. This means when you press the continuum mini fingerboard, if you're recording the MIDI, velocity is always going to be set to the maximum of 127. This is an MPE instrument, and MPE really doesn't use key velocity. It uses either channel pressure, or polynote pressure, or CC11, or some other CC that's been defined for expression. But perhaps you have a device or some need to process key velocity. Now to do that, you'll want to set this to dynamic velocity. And now when you press your fingerboard, it will respond to key velocity and send that MIDI data out, as opposed to sending out channel pressure, polynote pressure, or some CC that you've set for Z. So that takes care of the more system level functions for the Egan matrix that are in the top part of the matrix. Next time we'll look at the performance related controls and also the area where you actually program your presets which make up the rest of the Egan matrix.